No man has a right to raise a hand to a woman in anger other than in self-defense, and that rarely ever occurs. And so we have to just change the culture, period, and keep punching at it and punching at it and punching at it. Someone forgot to tell Joe Biden that violence begets violence, but okay. Well, look, the next president of the United States can have to do, th do two things. Defeat Donald Trump. That's number one. So when he becomes president, he needs to defeat President Trump? What? And number two, he's going to have to make, be, be able to go into states like Georgia and North Carolina and other places and get a Senate majority. That's what I'll do. <laughs> no, you won't. Because David Perdue of Georgia and Tom Tillis of North Carolina are up for re-election in 2020. Not to mention that there is a special election in 2020 to fill retiring Georgia Senator Johnny Isaacson's seat. So Biden, as president, would have to wait until 2026 to have any influence over the Senate seats. In other words, he's promising to do things that he ultimately has no control over. It wouldn't be the first time. If I'm elected president, you're going to see the single most important thing that changes in America is we're going to cure cancer. He made this ridiculous campaign promise back in June, and in five Democratic debates, none of the other candidates or debate moderators have challenged him on this. Instead, they challenge him on other things. This week, I hear him literally say that I don't think we should legalize marijuana. I, 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 I thought you might have been high when you said it. <laughs> and, and <laughs> Except for one thing. That's not what Biden said. I think, look, I think states should be able to make a judgment to legalize marijuana. I agree with I think that's okay. So he's perfectly fine with states choosing to legalize it. On the federal level, eh, that's another story. We, there's not nearly been enough evidence that has been uh, 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 acquired as to whether or not it is a gateway drug. Before I legalize it nationally, I want to make sure we know a lot more about the science behind it. So first, Booker completely misquotes what Biden said about legalization, and then he neglects to mention that in the same town hall, the former vice president said this. Ladies and gentlemen, anybody who's been convicted, it should not be a crime. It should be to the extent that it exists and anyone ever been convicted of the use of marijuana and put in jail. They should be immediately released. Their records should immediately be expunged. So Biden is open to legalizing marijuana on a federal level. And then he makes the case to not only release everyone convicted of a marijuana crime, but to also expunge their records. So why does Booker think that this is a worthy attack? Because there are people in Congress right now that admit to smoking marijuana, while there are people, our kids are in jail right now for those drug crimes. So instead of being mad at Biden, maybe Booker should be attacking his friend, Senator Kamala Harris. Have you ever smoked? I have. Okay. Like and I, and I inhale. I did inhale. I did inhale. And as Tulsi Gabbard pointed out in the second debate, Harris is a giant hypocrite when it comes to enforcing the law and her own private activity. She put over 1,500 people in jail for marijuana violations and then laughed about it when she was asked if she ever smoked marijuana. And despite her questionable record as a San Francisco district attorney, this time around, Harris awkwardly talks about how some people are above the law while others are not. There are clearly two different set of rules for two different groups of people in America. The powerful people who with their arrogance think they can get away with this, and then everybody else. Kind of like how you got away with smoking weed. For those working people who are working two and three jobs, if they don't pay that credit card by the end of the month, they get a penalty. Wait, is she mad that the powerful people pay their credit card bills in time? What is the argument? For the people who don't pay their rent, they get evicted. Yeah? And? For the people who shoplift, they go to jail. Well, unless you're from Harris's home state of California, where under Prop 47, you'll likely only get a fine and probation. We need the same set of rules for everybody. But admitting that you illegally smoked marijuana, possibly while you were working in law enforcement, well, I'm not so sure you'd really want the same rules applied to you, Kamala. Because you'd be in jail. So one of the most controversial policy plans among the Democrats is Senator Elizabeth Warren's proposed wealth tax. 
here's how it would work. If you have a net worth of more than $50 million, you will be taxed 2% of every dollar past 50 million. And for every dollar past 1 billion, you will be taxed an additional 4%. Warren calls this the ultra millionaires tax. But in her pitch during the debates, she forgot how her plan works. You know, I have proposed a two cent wealth tax. That is a tax for everybody who has more than $50 billion in assets. Your first 50 billion is free and clear. But your 50 billionth and first dollar, you gotta pitch in two cents. And when you hit a billion dollars, you gotta pitch in a few pennies more. I'm tired of freeloading billionaires. But these freeloading billionaires wouldn't be paying two cents more, they would be paying six cents. But regardless of her presentation, Warren's wealth tax will solve all of America's problems. Two cents on the top one tenth of one percent in this country, and we can provide universal childcare for every baby in this country aged zero to five. We can provide universal pre-K for every three-year-old and four-year-old in America. And we can raise the wages of every childcare worker and preschool teacher in America. We can put 800 billion new federal dollars into all of our public schools. We can make college tuition free for every kid. We can put 50 billion dollars into historically black colleges and universities, and we can cancel student loan debt for 95% of the folks who've got it. Not to mention that it also helps fund Medicare for all. The wealth tax would be perfect, except for that damn Fifth Amendment saying that you can't take one's property without just compensation. Stupid Constitution. So while Grandma was trying to rewrite the Constitution, some of the other candidates tried to make the case as to why they should be the Democratic presidential nominee. Because I have the right experience to take on Donald Trump. Pete Buttigieg is a two-term mayor of a city with a population of 101,000 people, and he won his last election with 8,515 votes, so gee, why shouldn't he be the president? I don't talk a big game about uh, helping the working class while helicoptering between golf courses with my name on them. I, I don't even golf. 16 of the last 19 presidents played golf. In fact, Lyndon Johnson played golf with senators to secure votes for the Civil Rights Act of 1964. But since Orange Man Bad plays golf, it's ruined for everyone. I never thought I'd be on a Forbes magazine list, but uh, they did one of all the candidates by wealth, and I am literally the least wealthy person on this stage. Wow, what a great pitch. Compared to all the other candidates, he's poor, and that's why you should vote for him or something. Thank you, Mayor. Senator Klobuchar, you said this of Mayor Buttigieg, quote, of the women on the stage, do I think that we would be standing on that stage if we had the experience he had? No, I don't. Maybe we're held to a different standard. Senator, what did you mean by that? What I said was true. Women are held to a higher standard. Otherwise, we could play a game called Name Your Favorite Woman President, which we can't do because it has all been men. In the meantime, let's play a different game. Name your favorite female candidate. Looks like you're in third place behind Warren and Harris. Great job. But I want to dispel one thing, because for so long, why has this been happening? Oh, are, are you going to address why you start to quiver every time you speak? I don't think you have to be the tallest person on this stage to be president. I don't think you have to be the skinniest person. I don't think you have the loudest voice on this stage. I don't think that means that you will be the one that should be president. I think what matters is if you're smart, if you're competent, and if you get things done. <laughs> no, it doesn't, sweetie. Because if that were true, Senator Bernie Sanders, who has literally accomplished nothing in his 29 years in Congress, would not be ahead of you in the polls by 16 points. I govern both with my head and my heart. And if you think a woman can't beat Donald Trump, Nancy Pelosi does it every single day. Well, then maybe Nancy Pelosi should be running for president. <laughs> to be commander in chief, there's no time for on the job training. Except that Barack Obama was a U.S. senator for all of two years before he announced his candidacy to be president. Serving one third of a Senate term hardly makes you ready to be commander in chief. I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm part of that, that Obama coalition. I come out of the black community in terms of my support. If you notice, I have more people supporting me in the black community that announced for me because they know me. They know who I am. Three former chairs of the Black Caucus, the only African-American woman that ever been elected to the United States Senate. A whole range of people. No, my point no, is not true. The other one is true. here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's break this down. 
Biden started to say the only black woman ever elected to the United States Senate, but then cut himself off and then said the only African-American woman. The only black African-American woman that ever been elected. Senator Harris is a black woman whose ancestry is Indian and Jamaican. And according to her father, Kamala is a descendant of Hamilton Brown, a plantation and slave owner who was born in Ireland. Yet Harris claims to be African-American, so maybe Biden is just as confused as the rest of us. I said the first. Thank I said the first Thank you. Oh, I see. He's just confused in general. And this guy is your front runner? Good luck, Democrats. First, a big special thanks to Poofy for all of her help this week with the video. And uh, thanks to you for watching, sharing, and hitting that like button. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Check out the links in the description and check out these videos that you may have missed. Thanks again for stopping by and I hope to see you all next time.